Hello, hello, happy Tuesday. It is time for my Tuesday Live. And today we are going to be doing a layout. Lauren's going to make a layout. <laughs> so we're going to do something a little different, but fun. And today I have a really simple formula for you that I think you're going to love whenever you have some busy papers. What can we do with busy papers or a lot of patterns? And I have a super simple fun formula for you that I'm going to share and create it. Create it. Actually, I'm going to take the same formula and create a few different layouts for you. So stay tuned. Um, and everyone who is here, I just want to say a huge welcome and thank you for being here. I appreciate all of you who have hopped on. I see Donna's here, Pam's here, Renee, Amy, Shannon, Jennifer. Oh, so good to see you. Teresa, Kristen, so nice to see all your names. Carolyn, Kim's here, Linda's here, Anne's here. So thank you for saying hello and for sharing your uh, whereabouts and where you're hopping on from, I think it's always so fun to see who is here from where you are here. So uh, welcome. All right. Well, before we get started, I just want to say it is gorgeous outside today. The sun is shining and it just made me feel so happy that I thought, let's celebrate springtime. And so my my shop, I decided to put on special this week um, the beautiful floral collections. There's four of them. And you guys will know as soon as I switch over, let me go ahead and switch over to my desk. You'll know which ones I'm talking about because I go back to these collections time and time again. They're the Capri Blue, Butterscotch, Jazzberry and Lime Tart. And I love these collections so much. I have done, you know, a lot of different borders and used them. And not only are they great just for springtime collections, but they're also great as mix in patterns. So, like when I organize these, I don't put these necessarily in my floral section. I put these in my colors because if I'm looking for greens, Lime Tart has some beautiful green patterns in here. And I always love having, you know, things that are primarily color based with my colors. So this sits on my color shelf. The same for Jazzberry and Capri Blue and Butterscotch. So this, you know, with my reds, with my blues, with my yellows. And that way I tend to go, oh, yeah, I do need kind of a, a fun patterned paper. Let me just check in here really quick what, what there are. Because, yes, there's it's predominantly floral. You know, there's a, a big floral undertone to these collections. But the pattern paper in here is just so great too. So just a quick reminder. Now, one thing that happened, um, I'm not exactly sure when, but I think they were having a sticker buffet a few months back. It's been a little while. And all of a sudden, the matching coordinating stickers for these collections were gone. They were just disappeared and gone. And so I always think, and, and the, the stickers that went with these collections were all borders. So you can see this is the one that goes with both the green, um, the lime tart and the capri blue is this sticker strip. There were three strips. And then there was one that I think goes mostly with jazzberry, the, um, the red and pinks in here. And then there was another one that went with um, the butterscotch. And actually this could go with lime tart as well. But these, this sticker strip, the pack of these three just disappeared. And they disappeared so fast, I could hardly get any myself. So this week, what I thought it would be kind of nice to do, if you never have used this collection, I would just definitely suggest getting some of these and trying it. And so this week, you can get a free coordinating sticker strip to go with your 
collections. Now these are just two piece collections. It's a paper pack and a laser um, die cut pack. So they're not, they're not big. I keep them in my baby bear sleeves. And um, so I just have, well, I have a couple paper packs in here, a couple of paper packs, the coordinating die cuts, and then the coordinating sticker. Since the sticker strips not, you know, the packs aren't available anymore. That is what I thought I would do with you today. So while I was looking at these papers, what I was realizing is that sometimes, you know, I know for myself, I get overwhelmed with pattern and <clears throat> the different, you know, how to use all these beautiful different types of paper together. And so what I thought would be kind of fun today would be to talk about and, and I get asked this a lot, Lauren, I don't know how to pick the papers that go with my photos. And I understand that. Um, and, and sometimes that is a little bit of a challenge. In fact, I'm gonna just grab, let me just grab a photo over here. Let's just say I've got this photo. And it's like, wow, I've got, I don't know, you know, I have this photo, I don't know what kind of paper to put with it. And so sometimes, what I do is, you know, gather all my photos together and then just kind of look in there and go, what are some complementing palettes that would go with them? So that's the first thing, like when I'm picking paper, I tend to do. And I don't always look in the photo and go, oh, you know, I've got, you know, kind of a pink flower on that dress. So well, I have to go match it with pink paper. To me, it's more important to just kind of match the feeling of the photos or the feeling of the event with the photos. Now, another trick though, is that when you have a, a super busy pattern like this, that doesn't necessarily go so well with a photo directly on top of it, right? But this is a beautiful pattern. It's just overwhelming to me by itself. And even some of these other ones, it's just kind of, wow, this is, you know, a big pattern. That's, that's a bold pattern. Even that does not feel exactly, you know, like I, I'm just kind of, my eyes are jumping all over the place when I'm looking at that. This is a, a little calmer, right? But still there's a lot of pattern going on, right? When you put your photos directly on this type of paper. So what I'm gonna show you today is a simple formula that you can use that take that gives you the the fun of using all these um, gorgeous papers, but it takes the emphasis off of putting the photo directly on the paper, and instead we're going to surround our photos with the pattern. So let me let me share what I'm talking about. And we're gonna use the Butterscotch Collection. I'm just, I don't know, I'm just feeling really springy and yellow today. And so what I'm going to have you do is, um, if you wanna do, you know, do this along with me. You can pick whatever collections uh, or, you know, pattern paper. In fact, I'm gonna show you how to do this same formula with Life at the Lake and see what happens with that. So, um, let me just kind of move this over and grab just a, a plain, I'm just gonna work on a plain white piece of paper. I'm gonna come back to these uh, lasers in just a minute. That's part of the laser cut pack. And so um, what we're gonna do is grab your 12 inch trimmer and we're gonna pick four pieces of paper, four patterns to, uh, to work with this formula, okay? I'm gonna go with a super busy one. I'm gonna go straight up with this bold rose pattern, okay? And I actually really like the flip side, this bold plaid as well. So what I've done, I've got a really bold print and I've got a really strong color plaid. So now what I wanna do is pick two more papers that are a little more on a neutral side. Okay, but first let me let me cut these and you'll see um, what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna cut the each strip super easy, you guys. Super easy formula, one and a quarter inches. 
one and a quarter, that's it. Cut a one and a quarter inch strip. And since I'm using both sides of this paper, I'm just gonna cut the same paper twice. So one and a quarter, okay. There we go. So now I have two one and a quarter inch strips, a bold, bold color pattern and a bold print pattern. Now I wanna look at my papers and go, okay, what else can I add in? that are going to kind of help complement these two paper choices that I've made. Okay, so I'm looking at all these patterns here and I'm not really feeling the dots because this to me feels very similar. Um, this feels very similar, it's a similar print. So this is kind of nice, this darker yellow. But if I put this, um, petite pattern up against there. Oh, I love that. So now I've got kind of a strong bold print and then I've got a looser, smaller print. So I'm gonna use this. I'm gonna cut another one and a quarter inch strip. Okay, super easy formula, friends. One and a quarter inch strip. And if you want a two page layout, you're gonna do this twice. Okay, so you're gonna cut two of each strip. Did I cut that at one or one and a quarter? Yeah, that is one and a quarter. Okay. <laughs> For some reason it looked small. And then um, I've also got this lighter. Okay, so now I'm gonna choose, it's actually kind of a, a choose between these two papers. Like which one do I like better? The This stronger yellow, this kind of pulled out the stronger yellow. But then I really love the softness that this lighter yellow brings kind of with these three patterns. So I'm going to choose this one and I'm going to take and cut another one and a quarter inch strip from this. Okay, so if you're doing a one page layout, you can just do four strips. If you're doing a two page layout, we're going to add in some more. And there's all kinds of variation that you can do to this really simple formula. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is take these strips and go, which ones do I like together? And I really like this floral, so I think I'm gonna put this one at the top. And, and you know, you might have to play around with this a little bit until you get the combination that you like. And if you decide that you don't like one of the papers that you picked, flip it over and see if you like the reverse side better, right? See if you like one of the other sides or cut another strip. It's a it's an inch and a quarter strip. It's not going to, you know, break the bank on your paper supply. <laughs> and then what we're going to do is actually do just a really simple weave in the top corner. So I'm going to take that first strip. I'm not going to put it all the way at the top. I always like leaving just a little bit of a reveal, about a quarter inch from the top. And then I'm going to take the next strip and place it on top. So I have a horizontal and now I have a vertical. If you guys were in my pop crop, yet yeah, we did a, um, a title page similar to this, but this is way simpler <laughs> than the title page we did. Then we're gonna take the next piece and pull it up to the top. And I'm gonna leave just a little bit of room in between like that. And now I'm going to take my last piece and, yep, I'm going to weave it. So I'm going to tuck it under the top, just like that. So now we have this really kind of interesting corner up here. It's just like a really fun woven corner. And we have used a lot of really interesting patterns for our page. So if we want to make the second page to this, you're, like I said, you're just going to cut those again. And again, this is where you can do variation upon variation if you choose to. So I'm going to grab those same patterns. I just happened to have them cut already. One sec here. And I'm going to continue the same pattern across the second page. Okay. So just here, and then this one goes on top. See, so just look over here, whatever you did. This one goes on top. Then I'm gonna do my next strip. 
And I can see like, oh, do I want that's kind of I don't want this strong yellow next to the softer yellow. So I'm just going to flip that around and put that there. I like that better. Pay attention to those little details. You'll be glad you did. And then now my last strip, which is the light yellow, and I'm just going to take this and tuck it under again. So we have the same treatment in both corners. And now what I love about this super simple formula, it, you know, that's it, guys. <laughs> it's done. But what happens is... I have what I like to call a stage area. I have all this beautiful real estate right here. I've, I've pushed all my busy eye jumping paper to the outside edges. And now I can just put my photos inside right now. I, I just happened to grab this photo. I should have had other photos ready, but let me just show you if you first though, because this is a photo, I just want to say, there's no more pattern paper competing with this, right? Which is what I love. When you do a simple layout like this, you don't have to have the photo directly on the, the paper that's kind of distracting, in my opinion. So now my eye is clustering. I'm gonna, I would cluster all my photos in this area and I've got this beautiful border edge detail with these really strong patterns, but it works because it's all pushed to the outside. And um, if you want to just load up the center, I mean, there's so many different formulas for photos that you can put in here. You could do, you know, a, a couple, whoops, four by six, six by four. I mean, there's plenty of room inside here to, you could, you could do this and then um, do a title or something fun over here, right? Do two portraits oh, over here. So there's lots of room. You could load up your layout with, um, <clears throat> with a lot of different uh, types of, one second here types of photos. Like you're not limited at all. Whatever size photo you want to put in there, you can. If you want to put three and a half or five, four by fours, whatever, whatever would work. You could put in a journal box, all that good stuff. So then this is super simple. So how can we just, you know, easily snazz this up just a little bit? Well, let's take a look at the there's a lot, there's a lot of different things. There, th this is such a simple formula. There's so many easy ways you could dress it up, right? So in the butterscotch there and all of the collections, they have these absolutely gorgeous laser cuts. But when I put something like this down, it just seems to, again, overwhelm my page a little bit. And it does, it also cuts down the area that I have for my photos. Now that's not bad if you just wanted to have two photos in there. But I also always look at embellishments and lasers and things in a different way. And if you cut that same laser in half, look at these gorgeous pieces that you have. And look how easily then you could just layer on a little bit of laser right on top, you know, either the outside one or you could put it on the inside one. You could do one side or you could do both sides, whatever you want to do. You could do it on here. You could do it up on the top. But now you have just kind of an extra little detail without it overtaking, you know, a whole lot of real estate on your page. So whenever you're looking at some of these larger things, like how do I use these big things that come with it? I say, get your scissors out, <laughs> get your scissors out, get your trimmer out. And, um, you know, think, think about how to use those in multiple ways and maybe not necessarily in its complete form. This uh, set also, these all have these awesome laser cut words, which are just so fun 
to use on your page. So these are just extra little goodies that, you know, easily you can group on your page and add. Now, of course, I look at this and I go, I need a layering shape behind it, you know, just to add a little bit of a finishing detail so that you get that separation from your page to your embellishment. Now, I also just want to mention, um, I've never really talked about <clears throat> the totally tonal embellishments that kind of came and went in the blink of an eye. And so um, I have a few of these left in my shop, but people have just been buying them because I think they just saw them and they go, oh, that looks cute. But there were, um, there were four different packs and we never really, they didn't come out all at the same time. And then it was really hard to get a hold of them. But there was Totally Tonal Stars and Hearts, Totally Tonal Flowers, and Totally Tonal Leaves. And I tell you, I love these collections. I am so in love with them. You can see how many I kept for myself. <laughs> so these are the lasers that go with the collection. And then um, each of the collections also have little laser die cuts. Now, this is a much smaller format. I love these. So there's something like this, happy, and look at these cute little flowers. This is so easy. So let's just kind of play with different, now that we have this formula down, what are different ways we can dress it up? So you can do a little cluster with uh, embellishments, and, and these are just, you know, you can see some of the embellishments that came in that pack. It was just so cute. Lots of fun. Um, this was the flowers. This is the one I, I don't have very many left. Um, and then there's leaves. And let me just show these to you. This is the leaves with the uh, long leaves. And then hearts and stars. These I have bundled together in the shop. But these are the hearts and the stars collection. And I think these came out first. And then they, they blipped and just gave us you know, a chance to get these super fast and then they were gone. Um, but I love these. And so look at just taking a little laser, just something like this. Now you can do the same thing with a border maker cartridge, right? Do, you know, grab a border maker cartridge and lay that on top. And then look at, it's so dressed up now. Maybe I don't want this title up here now. Maybe I want to move this title down in this corner, or let's see, down here maybe, um, as a cluster, and then maybe put in journaling right here. But all of a sudden, just putting a little something extra on top just makes a huge difference on this super simple formula, right? So easy, easy, super simple, pushing all that busyness to the outside, and also, you know, whenever you take a look at some of these things that are large, think small. Think, how can I make it work with my page and maybe, you know, just take it down a notch, right? So um, I just want to share, this was also tucked into my butterscotch collection. This was um, a border that I did a long time ago, and it's using a few different things. This is from the Rainbow edges laser collection. I do still have that in the shop and then some of the embellishments. And then this was from a sticker and from flowers, you know, so you can kind of mix and match colors, especially if you have things organized by color, it's really easy to do, but that's a fun, um, border. So, you know, you can just kind of mix and play with these patterns in a way that works for you. You can see, I like this combination, right? The plaid, the light yellow, and then that little petite pattern. But I also just wanted to show you how breaking even a very large print pattern into a smaller format works. I think it really works for your page. Okay, so there's some quick tips on um, how to do that for the Butterscotch collection. Now you could do the very same thing. Let's just take this off. This is the reason I didn't stick anything down because I want to show you 
the same formula in a few different ways, right? So you might go, well, Lauren, I don't really have anything orange and yellow. Okay, so let's grab the um, Capri Blue collection and we're gonna do the same thing. Let's mix it up maybe with some different patterns. So let me move my templates out of the way. <clears throat> and you're gonna be so surprised how when you just change the paper, right, the whole feel of it work, look, you know, just feels differently. Look at these gorgeous patterns in here. This is the Capri Blue um, collection. And let's see, the designer paper pack. So I think we should try that big old pattern again. Let's use that. Let's use... Let's use something a little different and hold on. I think we're going to go. Yeah, let's do that. And I need to go back to hold on my um, my index sheet to make sure I've got the right ones in here. Capri blue, Capri blue, yeah. Okay, so let's use, I think I might have a couple other um, mystery prints in here as well. The small one. Let's see. I'm looking for, oh, I think it's on the back of that. Nope, that's not, that's not it. I'm looking for the one with the white on the back. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> it's a mystery. I don't know where that pattern went. Maybe I used it. Oh, here it is. I think it's on the back of this. Oh, there we go. So I'm going to do... <laughs> okay, sorry guys. Um, I'm going to do a lighter color. We're going to use different patterns here. I'm gonna still use this really bold floral print. I'm gonna go darker this time, and then a really light contrast, and then we're gonna pick the backside of one of these. And let me grab my trimmer again, just using one and a quarter inch strips. If you, and, and that's, that's debatable. Like if you wanna use a one inch strip, you could do that too. I just like the, with the larger print, I like just a little bit more. So there's one, and then I'm gonna cut this darker blue, two here. And I still haven't decided, uh, we might use the back side of that, or we could use the plaid again. Here's that third print, so you can see these. One, two, three. And now this is really different because this is a much lighter print I think we're gonna go, let's go with the flowers and just do another one and a quarter strip of that. I like, th I like that combination personally, but you know, it's all up to you. And let's just make a, you know, show you how to do this on a one page really quick here. So once again, let's flip, let's flip these around Hold on, let me move this out of the way. I'm gonna put the big floral pattern here and then I'm gonna take my other strong color and put it across the top. Take my lighter color, I'm gonna put this one next to this floral pattern and then take this smaller floral and tuck it in right here. So it's just such an easy corner weave right here for your layout. And just by switching up the, the paper colors, whoo, all of a sudden you have something that looks totally different. Now I also want you to remember you can do this. So if you don't want the um, weave in the top corner, put it in the bottom. And now, whoo, look, it totally looks different here too, right? So <clears throat> let's take a look at the 
stickers like this one has these really gorgeous stickers in here and I love this leaf sticker that would be beautiful a beautiful accent you can see going right down here right down the center or across the bottom that leaf accent gorgeous so you can use stickers you can use embellishments you can use um, the layers that the layer pieces that come in with the collection so this one has this really neat long um let's see here we go it's a long kind of leafy light green let me grab both of these all this out of here so this one you could use that or remember, like I said, you can also replace one of these with a border maker cartridge strip, right? So you could do some texture and design that way. But I think on this one, this would be so fun. I, I would do something like add this um, leaf ring. Let's get a let's get a big. Let me see, maybe this big layering shape. I love the circles, um, working with the circles for these collections. You could do that and then just have some fun. Let's look into the, these have some die cuts in here. This one says wonderful day could do that. That's a half. What else do we have? We have more leaves. There's a lot of clovers in this one, in the leaves one. Let's see. Lots of different kinds of leaves. Oh, look at this cute little leaf heart. Celebrate. So, you know, you, I'm just kind of pulling things out, but totally different layout. Just depending on what you pull together to kind of complement your strips, right? So just think that's easy enough. And if you haven't used your, you know, these floral collections, such an easy formula to do that with. Okay, so let me then change things up a whole, and go in a whole different direction because I was thinking, how, how much can we really use this? I mean, it works great with some floral patterns and different things, but what if we really switched things up and used something like the new Lake Life collection? So um, let's see about using the same formula, but now let's tweak it just a little bit. So I'm gonna um, see how this works with you. And um, grab the new Lake Life collection. So uh, I know I mentioned on Friday that these these prints are a little much for me, right? <laughs> like like a little much. But as I was kind of looking through this again, I was thinking, well, is there a way that we could tone this down? And so let's take a look at our formula, but we're going to tweak it just a little bit. And when I looked at this paper, what I liked, this is like too much for me, but what I liked was this little snippet right here. And I started thinking, oh, what if we just took a little strip of this and did the same kind of formula, kind of keeping these busy pattern papers off to the edges and see what happens. So on this one, I, I love the clouds in the sky. And then there's just like, you know, variation of trees in this pattern. So um, I'm actually, I think on this one, I'm going to go up to an inch and a half just so I capture a little bit more of the trees up here. Okay, so let's do an inch and a half for my cut. And already, I love it so much more. <laughs> okay, look at that cute little strip. And then we are going to flip it over because this paper, um, the backside is just a great 
uh, green neutral. It's just a great, great green neutral. But hold on, before we do that, what I want to do is also look at, well, no, hang on. Let's see. I was going to use, I'm going to use this yellow wood. So I'm going to go over here and because this is an inch and a half, I'm going to take this pattern and do the same thing, do an inch and a half. So we're going to kind of build our edges first here. And I'm going to tuck this under. This is going to be an over and under. Did I do an inch and a half? That does not look like... Why are my eyes deceiving me today? Like they do not look like the same size, but they are. <laughs> okay. Um, inch and a half. There we go. And then I want to come back to this green. And, you know, we could do a lot of different variations on here. We could punch a border, right, with the trees and the tents. And I was actually thinking about trying that because I have not opened my new little trees and tents border maker cartridge. So I thought, let's try that. And instead of putting a strip on top, let's try it with a border maker cartridge. So this is an edge style border maker. And we are going to, I'm going to just punch this on some scratch paper really quick. In case there's a little oil left in there. Okay, looks good, looks clean this one. And then I'm gonna uh, edge this green part, okay? So we're, in essence, we're going to make our own tree line, tree intent line with this. So let's pop this in here. And again, if you want to make a two-page spread, you're just going to repeat this process for your second page, right? So easy. So let's pop the tree and tent. Oh, that's cute. I haven't even used this yet. As you saw, I just got this out. <laughs> it's really cute. Okay. And so this one now gives us this fun layering piece instead of just a straight cut. So let's get these off. And then let's see how wide we want to make this. So this is going to be the tents come out to be, it looks like about an inch with the tree tops. If you look at that. So I'm going to go inch and a half, no, inch and a quarter, inch and a quarter. Let me make sure I'm straight, inch and a quarter, so that I get just a little bit of green underneath those trees um, for it to kind of rest on. So instead of doing a straight strip, now I have a border strip, right? So I can layer that right on top. And I'm already liking how easy and simple this is. So now what I need is just another complementary paper to go on this side. So I'm going to go into some of these patterns. And there's a lot of, you know, really uh, different types of patterns we can look in here. So if you, if this were fishing pictures, you could look at, you know, doing the fishing lures. Uh, there's this busy, let's go with busy because that's what we're talking about, busy papers. So this is a really busy paper. So let's take this and we're going to cut this at an, um, I'm going to cut it actually at, this is a, an inch and a half, right? So let's cut this at three quarters of an inch. Three quarters. Let's see, maybe three quarters or one. Let's do, let's do one. Let's do a one inch. I don't want to go quite as big because this one we layered. So I want it to kind of feel like it's about the same. And then we've just got this nice little extra pattern. Now, if we wanted to weave it, 
we'll see how that looks. But if not, we can just tuck them both under this top pattern. But let's see how that looks if we weave it. Ah, it's a little weird. <laughs> So I think what I would do is just kind of keep this both tucked under the top. So this one we're just, we're not going to weave, but we're still doing the same idea of just four strips with different papers and keeping those big prints and patterns to a minimum by, uh, you know, just pushing them to the top and the side. Okay. So there's um, an idea for the like at the lake, life at the lake. Did, what did I say? <laughs> life at the lake. Um, and if you wanted to take up less room, you could even, you know, put this on top and just let that peek out both sides. You know, that's another easy, just layering, layering patterns. And a little of this, I feel, goes a long way. So now let's just take a quick look at, um, you know, what comes in the life at the lake. We've got some border stickers and some icon stickers. So now you could take all of these. I would grab some more layering shapes and, you know, kind of layer and cluster away. And then you'd have just a fun new uh, layout. And especially if you did this on a two page, I, I love that. So just a super easy formula. We're using the same idea. And let's take, uh, here's some of the icon, here's some embellishments since I, I don't really want to pull my stickers off at the moment. Um, but you can Let's see. Oh, there's a cute one there, right? Little boat. And then if you wanted to make that stand out, just slip a little layering shape underneath there. And now you've got a really fun uh, layout for your photos here. So what I want to do before I forget <laughs> is, um, I, I just wanted to mention last week, I think it was last week or the week before I gave a challenge to my customer group that um, if you posted a layout using wide open places in my customer group, you could get in a drawing for a $25 product credit. Now, this is just for my customer group, which means you have to have shopped with my creative memories link to get in that group. Um, and there were two ladies that did it, Cindy E and Mary B. And since only I had only two ladies, you guys both got the $25 product credit. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to send you another challenge. And that, that, that way I know who's coming here to Tuesday and watching my Tuesdays. And, um, if you use this formula, you can use it on any collection and post it. So basically you're just going to pick four papers, cut them into strips, or you can do, you know, the border makers like we just did here and add those in um, and post it. You will be put in a drawing for, uh, I'm going to give away two more uh, $25 product credits for the Creative Memories website. Okay. So get your thinking caps on try this simple formula because another thing I want to just remind you is that, you know, not all pages have to be super complicated and it felt so good to finish my album by just going back to simple, easy pages. And so try this formula. I, I think if you try it, it will stick with you that it's an easy way of, you know, using your paper but keeping a focus on your photos, right? Because you're just grouping your photos here in the middle of the paper. And then, of course, you know, embellish around those photos and, and have fun in that process, right? You can always move your embellishments around in your titles and different things. Um, so that's my challenge for this week is try the formula, post it in my customer group, and... Uh, 
I will give um, I will do a drawing away. So let me come over to the chat. I haven't really checked out who's here. Hello, everyone. Um, so Vicki, yeah, is that an, an easier way to take in life at the lake, right? Just, just a super little bit of that. And isn't that cute? I love the clouds and the tippy tops of that tree. So there's always a way of, of just rethinking, uh, you know, different parts to a collection. Okay. Um, Judy. So yeah. Oh, good. You like, you guys are liking life at the lake. <laughs> um, Sherry Lynn is, um, listening. Okay. Oh, your science and reading class multitasking. I love it. All right. Um, any other questions? <laughs> Linda's like, I passed on these, but now I wish I hadn't. So, um, let's see. Jacqueline has, um, on my Amazon store, is my preference the Amazon picture, Epson picture mate, or the, um, for printing photos at home? I know I've, I've actually had a couple questions recently. So the first video I did on, um, my <clears throat> print at home video was the Canon crafter printer. And then I moved to the Epson picture mate, um, that I have actually I was going to see if I can, no, I got to switch to my other camera. Hold on here. So I keep my Epson picture mate. See my messy room right there, right there. Do you see it? Bing right here. So the reason I use, and there's my, um, Cricut joy extra right here. And then there's my picture mate. So the reason that I use the, um, those, the picture mate, and I talk about that a lot, is because you can see it's right next to me on my workstation, right? So being able to have my laptop, you know, I usually have my laptop. I pick the photos I want. I send it right there. Um, it's a small format. And the photo quality, if you pair Epson with Red River, you got to have the Red River paper, my friends. Epson with Red River, beautiful. My other Canon crafter printer. I use that because it does five by seven, eight by 10, 12 by 12, you know, eight and a half by 11. It does all the larger formats. So I still use both, but for, I'd say 90% of my printing, I use the Epson PM 400 and the quality. I really can't tell the difference between my Canon crafter and my Epson when I use the same Red River paper. The quality is beautiful on both of them. So hopefully that helps clear up. So I use um, the, and the fast photo is a scanner. <laughs> so if you're looking for a scanner, if you see Epson fast photo, that's a scanner. So if you're, if you wanna scan your printed photos, that's the scanner that I use. Okay, but the PictureMate PM400 is a printer. All right. Hopefully that cleared that up. And Joni wants to know, is there a place where I post the layouts? I do. Um, not, not really. I have been thinking about that and, um, I don't really have a whole lot <laughs> of places where I can post. I can put them in my customer group. Um, and that's what I was thinking of getting you guys to get excited about creating layouts and we can, I can make albums in my customer Facebook group. So um, maybe that's a good way to organize them. But at the moment, that's what it is. I know. <laughs> okay. So please scrap lift away, Carla. Um, yeah. <laughs> Easy to do. And Debbie said, I love how you remind us of the old stuff that we forget we have. Yeah. What's old is new again. I really love those um those floral collections. And once again, just remember, keep them with your colors. You can see I keep them right up here on my color shelf so that I remember um, because there's so many beautiful springtime collections and we have birds and blossoms right now and, you know, all these um, other spring collections that they were kind of getting lost when there are some just great textural patterns in those collections. So um, hopefully that will help. And, and I am, and Amy wants to know, am I keeping the photo templates, um, 
Yes, the photo templates are sold out right now and I'm working on getting some more boxes. Um, the, the pink boxes for the cut templates and I also have to cut the templates. And then the green boxes for the sentiment stickers, um, those I'm also working on getting these back in too. So stay tuned. Um, more new things coming. I also just want to make sure I mentioned super quickly. Um, some of you may have already found I did put another fun new, um, now it's buried on my desk here. I did put a fun new um, product in my shop and these are called Magical Birthday Titles. And um, I noticed you guys are really loving the titles, the, you know, little, little packets that you can just pick up in my shop and they're ready to go. All you have to do is, you know, kind of add them to your page. So um, I am going to be adding some more of these little collections to my shop, but this one was one I've been wanting to add in there for a while. And um, I'm in love with these. <laughs> Just love the the fonts and look at the cute little ears that come with this. Um, it goes right on top of that B. Those ears do. And this one says birthday squad and this one says happy birthday. So just some fun little die cut titles. Now you're going to need to use these with your layering shapes if you want to add them, you know, and have them pop on a page. But I decided that the black was kind of universal Disney-ish <laughs> magical um, so that this would go well with, um, you know, like the Sparks of Magic collection or anything uh, in, the, in that colorway. So um, have fun finding some new things in the shop. Just keep your eye out. And I'm always trying to find some fun new things to add in both my VIP shop and my uh, Craft Some Joy shop. And this week, once again, let me do a quick screen share that um, we are going, I have featured the collections I just shared. All of the butterscotch, capri blue, jazzberry, and lime tart are each going to come with that um, free coordinating sticker strip this week. And uh, if you'd like to uh, see the April, uh, sticker gift, the sentiment sticker gift, it is right here. And that is uh, with any order from my online Craft Some Joy shop, you get that tucked in your order, as well as the other new gifts that are here as well, the new sketches and the new welcoming wood block. All right, so that is the news and what's new from my shop. And any other questions before? I think I got most of them. Yeah, Ellen says she loves the basket weave. It reminds her. I know sometimes we have to kind of take those, uh, you know, that feeling of, of um, quilting and, you know, basket weaves and needlepoint and all those fun handcrafts. Bring them into our paper craft world, right? So it's so fun. All right. And a big hi to everyone. Judy, I see you're here. Carla, Carrie, so good to see you. Marsha, Beatrice, Amy. Oh, so good to see all you guys. Um, Suzanne. So thank you for joining me today. And um, Belinda, something was missing from your order. Just email me because it's been a little crazy here. And um, <laughs> If I miss something, I am so sorry, but I will make sure it is uh, taken care of. So just email me, Belinda, what you need. Okay. And um, Shirley said she followed the YouTube on how to make picture templates. Yes. And I do have a video on how to make your own DIY, right? And um, Patty said she ordered the Red River and her Epson will be here Tuesday. Awesome. Great. I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. I use it all the time, all the time. So has the scrapbooking bear come back? It is beautiful in springtime. I am assuming that those bears are going to be around soon, but right now I haven't seen a, a few um, in a while. So <laughs> thank you so much, everyone, for joining this fun, beautiful Tuesday. 
have um, give it a try. Give my simple formula a try. I think you will enjoy how easy it is and how it really still puts the focus on your photos, but lets you use that paper in a fun way. And just by adding different things into that formula, you can make your pages look really different. And oh, one last thing I should also say, if you really want to, um, let me go back to just one last tip. If you really want to um, show, go all the way around your page, you can do that as well with, um, like, say you wanted this pattern, this weave to go all the way around your page. You could just take and cut some smaller strips and make it a frame, you know, all the way, like either, either one page or your double page spread. So you can continue that same kind of just small strips and weaving all the way around your page. Easy. Easy to do that as well. That's just another variation on the theme. So enjoy that. I hope you try it. And uh, if you do, make sure you post in my customer group. And um, let me get some fun uh, products out to you that you can try. So there we have it. Have a wonderful rest of your Tuesday, friends. Thank you all for hopping on. And uh, until I see you next time, remember Saturday's the pop crop. So all my pop stars, I will see you Saturday. And until then, I hope you take some time to craft your joy. Bye for now.